the classic. That's going to be a hell of a between matchup. players. As we switch gears here, hopping on board with the new series, Complexity versus Navi. Both of these two teams have been overperforming by most of the community's standards and opinions. But again, only one can take the series. Only one can move on. The loser goes home. I'm looking at the newcomer, Glory, on the side of Navi. And I'm looking at the veteran, Gilkey, on the side of Complexity. I feel like when a team that includes Gilkey pops off, he's usually the one doing the popping off. This guy's only gotten better with time. I remember playing against him back in the Halo 3 days, and he's way better than he even was back then. So That's incredible, right? That Gilkey has improved over time. The and he's over 30, most. I think. Yeah. Well, he might be 29. I'm actually not sure how old he is. He was definitely younger back then, but... Uh, Nonetheless, an, an right. illustrious, extremely long and versatile career with the likes of Gilkey. As we see z Mighties go down. Both of these two teams here in the early goings of this match still fighting for that crucial map control, a symmetrical arena-style map here on Aquarius means both of these two teams are fighting for that 50-yard line. Top mid, going to be so crucial. Glory starting off with five kills as has Snipe Drone. Jimbo so far to, yet to put a kill on the board, but you can imagine he's still doing quite a bit for his team. Always knows how important positioning is. Putting down damage, he's got three assists as well. But it's complexity right now, running this flag in. Ooh, I like this play here from Tusk. He's going to let his teammate finish the capture and potentially defend. That's what he's doing here. Yeah, absolutely. I love this recognition. You could have seen it maybe a little, again, early desperation from one of these teams. And maybe that opens the door up for Navi to get a counter cap here. But as long as Tusk maintains his life, which he does, three go down for Navi. This is going to turn out to be a huge heads up play from the player coach. Tusk making a play that I think you're starting to expect from a guy like that. Heads up. He makes so many intelligent plays. This guy is certainly underrated when it comes to team captains. I, I know that he's calling the shots for this squad a lot of the time. Gilkey is as well. But this guy is, like you said, he's a player coach. He's calling a lot of the shots right there. His decision to back out of that was because he recognized his chances of dying were very high if he tried to just YOLO the flag run in. Decides to wait for his shields. They're going to get a couple more kills so they can more safely pull that flag in. It was a little risky too, though, because if you know, a few kills went out of their favor. That could have been the end of the run, but nonetheless, was the right decision in that moment. Navi with a little bit of a delayed onset counter cap here. Three down for complexity. Jimbo going to run along the front yard because he doesn't sense much danger or pressure because of that life advantage. Still two down for complexity as Jimbo does, in fact, put in that delayed counter cap. Tying it up so crucial here in the early goings of this match. Essentially back to a 0-0 zero -zero score line. Which team is going to be able to get control of mid-map and then get a few kills that allow them the freedom to enter the other team's base? Whichever team is able to get to the other side, most likely to cap the next flag here. Jimbo looking to push out of the back of his spawn is, again, seeking some intel there. Thought a player might be at pink. Doesn't get any grenade indication through the audible scream or yell of a player getting hit. That allows Jimbo to push up freely on that piece side, but he goes down quickly after. And now the numbers advantage is in the hands of Complexity as you see them swarming at mid-map. But they got to worry about Snipe Drone in the back. Snipe Drone so smart off of his spawn point. Must have spawned P1 or in the fridge. Just went all the way through to get behind wow. the enemies. He's got a teammate that was able to go in and grab the flag as well. Despite Complexity looking to be in better positioning there. Do have the flag pretty far, but it's now Complexity with Navi's flag out as well. Yeah, that's that moment where you got to ask, where's the fourth? Snipe Drone. Got behind enemy lines, and now he's got a flag out. Looking to win a 1v1 as well as Gilkey takes him down. Three go down for Navi, and wow, Snipe Drone did a good job to play flank, to play distracted, to play bait, but Complexity didn't take it as Carmea has his hands on the flag. Now the heat wave, and should see a return here at the bottom of the thrust. Yep, as we see Carmea, and look how patient Complexity is playing. This is not a team that looks pressed or stressed like we've seen from them in recent weeks, and even land. This is the result of them just taking a step back, perhaps taking a mean look in the mirror after a very tough month of scrimming. We, we alluded to it before, but they were not winning very many scrims at all leading up to this tournament. They but won more series in two days than they won in two months, Eli. Right. <laughs> That's impressive. And we also mentioned they were the first team in the venue yesterday. Yep. So props to them. These guys showed up early. They're going to put in the hard work. This is a very important weekend to show up. So doing everything they can to correct on mistakes they've been making, and so far we're seeing that result. Complexity, drew first blood, scored first, but Navi countered shortly after. 
Plexio pacing along with that second score, going up by one, and Carmea killing pacing with a bank spree. shot, killing spree. Depletes the remains of that heat wave, and look at him, he's kind of calling for his teammates. Come on, boys, I got a killing spree. I'm taking down all of Navi, I need some help. As we start to see that mount here in the pressure of Navi's base, Carmea taking the backside, trying to take down an unsuspecting opponent, that's Jimbo. But Jimbo does a good job there to take down Tusk. So important when you're facing pressure from multiple opponents to isolate one of those enemies and get a kill before you die. If you die without a kill, that you're giving the other team a lot of free reign. So big props to Jimbo for that trade, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to stop this complexity push here. Looks like they do get the flag returned back home, but uh, Carmea is still causing mayhem in the util side here. Carmea is paying rent at Navi's generator. I don't know, he's, he's playing the, paying the electricity bill at least, because my goodness. How long has this life been? At least two, maybe three now minutes as Carmea has a flag out, all four down for Navi. And my goodness, if this last sequence from Carmea doesn't perfectly encapsulate the maturation of growth of this player, I don't know what else you could watch because this has been perfect Halo from Carmea. So crucial that he used that thruster to get around that corner. I think he was dead to rights if he didn't use that in that exact moment. He is unable to continue oh running God. it for now, but he gets this kill as Gilkey gets another in the kill feed, and this flag's going to go all the way home. This might be the play of the weekend from what we've casted, Eli, because my goodness, the, the patience, the strategy, the decision-making, the execution, the shots being hit for Carmea as he almost takes down Jimbo wow. as well. He was on the verge of a potential killing frenzy, but that clutch takedown from Jimbo and the rest of Navi put three down for complexity. Navi looking for a goal line stand, needing it most here with a one hill, or excuse me, flag deficit. Look at that flag right there on the stump. Oh, yes, reset wow. though, wow, what a huge defensive effort there from Navi. I spoke too soon, let wow. me stand corrected. I said it was going home because I saw two dead, but it was Z-Mighties with the last second, last second flag pull, and then the pressure coming in from the util afterwards from his teammates, that was an insane effort from Navi. And think about it, you'd grade Carmea's life at A+. He played it perfectly and it still wasn't enough. That really goes to show Navi. They've been boot camping for the last three weeks here in the States, and my goodness does it show as that looked like a surefire score for complexity, but now it's Z-Mighties and the rest of the Navi squad with the potential flag out, but on the competing side of the map, another one goes wow. out. It's gonna be a dually flag run. Mighties with some very clutch shots on Carmea, shuts him down and gets this flag all the way through the middle of the map, and he's still going. Finally taken out by King Nick, but Snipe Drone right there to continue the run. This is going to be a hard-fought flag cap as both teams are currently staggering. Jimbo, last player alive, looking to make a hero play, but no, he goes down. And that might just do it on this particular flag run. Still plenty of time if Complexity are able to score, but they still got a lot of, a lot of meat left on that bone as well. As both flags start to trickle a return. Oh, three go down for Navi. Somehow they still get the reset, Eli. What? That was... How? Well, that was actually C Complexity's flag. Yeah, it goes out after three to go down for Navi. Complexity with the other flag out. Now able to get it mid-map. But, I mean, so far, both teams making it very difficult to even cross the halfway point on this map. I, I am shocked that we haven't seen a third score here for Complexity. These are three, four, five sequences in a row where it looks like they have the edge. They have the numbers advantage. We've seen dark blue at the top right of your screen for Navi. Is, it finally pays off for them. Gilkey finally able to put that third score in that it looked like complexity more than deserved. I have to agree with you. They should have capped probably two more. This game could very well just be over now if it weren't for the great defensive efforts out of Navi. Navi, though, with just two minutes to go, has to make a stand now. Very important for them to get multiple dead here and start more opportunities to cap the flags to come back into this. Just a little over two to go, and that's going to leave a little over a minute on each of these flag runs if Navi want to come back. And what a great way Double to start kill. down two with the two kills from Glory and that commando. Flag out, but Gilkey with the shots at P2. That's huge, but he trades out three go down for complexity. This could be a score for Navi. Such massive damage out of Glory before dying there. Getting a ton of value out of his life. Snipe Drone not going to grab this flag just yet. Wants to make sure that player top mid is not going to make his life difficult. But now it's the spawners that are making his life difficult. Does beat the corner here, but I think they're going to have to get a few more kills if they're going to take this one home. Plenty of time in this one if Snipe Drone is, in fact, able to put this one home, and he does. 90 seconds left. We got ourselves a game. Jimbo got two kills on the spawners as the flag went in. That's a good sign if you want to get another cap right away. Mighty's taking another player down. 
Looks like Snipe Drone is aware all the enemy's players are spawning on the P side. Huge trade. Gilkey, I feel like he gets more of those like death sticks than just about anybody else I watch. That's like the Gilkey special right there. If you're gonna take him down, you're gonna suffer for it and could be just enough to slow down Navi during this push. Oh, unfortunate. Three go down for Navi. Jimbo on that killing spree, but it's not gonna be enough. But because Navi paced ahead of that one minute per score on that first flag, they're gonna still have one, maybe at most two chances to tie this one up. Important to note that all it's gonna take is for Navi to have the flag out to activate overtime here. Double kill. During the next 40 seconds, they're gonna at the very least wanna get the flag taken out of the base. Looks like Carmea gonna make that even more difficult by shooting the spawners in the back. Wow. But misses a couple of crucial heat wave shots that could be a slight door opener for Navi here. Numbers advantage starting to become a, a factor, a big factor for Navi. The clock becoming more and more of a fifth teammate for the likes of Complexity as Gilkey. Again, just needs to trade out. Does that through the assist. And it looks like Complexity should have their hands on a game one win. Is yeah, if Rigo not for does, Mighty's yeah. making the most incredible play you've ever seen in HGS Halo Infinite. That'll do it. 3-2 win for Complexity as they go up 1-0 in the series. They honestly just look like the better team. I mean, look at the stats there. 26, 21, 21, 21. I mean, Woo. is this a 21 Savage mixtape or <laughs> like what's going on, man? But I mean, when you see that level of consistency between the players, something yeah they're, they're kind of clicking as a unit right i feel like everyone's filling in the position that yeah. needs to be filled per moment whereas it felt kind of like navi a few members of them might have been like overstepping trying to do a little bit too much uh yeah i try not to look too much into stats right eli but yeah. i do always say to to fans and, and halo players if you want to make something out of the stats take a look at the grouping of statistical performance from uh teammates on a team if all their kills are pretty in the line, if all their assists are pretty in the line, all their deaths are pretty close, one of those three statistical categories, that indicates to us that they're playing together. They're not only communicating at the, uh, the same thing, but they're looking at the same thing and acting on the same thing as well. The minute you start getting two callouts and they're looking in two different directions, you start splitting the, the focus and the prioritization of enemies, that's when you start to get into that spawn trouble. That's when you start to almost stagger yourself a little bit. We know how good some of these teams are at forcing staggered spawns, but you can almost force staggered spawns for yourself if you get too ahead of yourself and you, you don't play as that team before, you don't play as that group. So keep an eye on the grouping of the stats to see if some of these guys are playing well as a group. Absolutely agree with you. What it tells me if all members of the team have about the same kills, it means that everyone's filling the position that needs to be filled in the moment. So they're not all just trying to, like there's not any player that's like, okay, my job is to go P2 and stand here and shoot spawners. Like, they recognize, okay, there's a lot of times that I have to leave P2 and do something else. Or They're just capable of being flexible and playing on the fly, and they all have the same game plan of what is the correct decision in the moment, and that's why they all play so similarly. It's very uh, interesting to watch. On the side of Na'Vi, like I said, it felt like maybe they were overforcing some things. Mighty's not with a great game statistically, but I did also see him just kind of like forcing his way into the other base and grabbing a flag desperately without getting a kill or any damage before doing so. so. I'd like to see them kind of reel it in here. Uh, they, 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 I know they have that discipline. We've seen it from them before, but they got to start now in Live Fire Team Slayer. Yeah, Mighties and Glories, we know their ceiling, but they haven't yet established that floor. That leads to some inconsistent performances like the one we just saw in game one. But in relation to that hot, cold conversation, just had a cold game. Expect a hot one here on Live Fire Slayer where Navi need that to tie it in the series. And these are these are big, big swing games. I know it's still early in that series layout, but this is huge. The difference between being tied, Eli, oh, yeah. and down 2-0, needing a reverse sweep. I, I mean, you're, you're looking at completely different ends of the spectrum. What does this mean for Navi here? Is this, is this one of those game twos that's like a game five, or how do you break this one down? It's the world championship, Hunter. They got to win every single game. Every single game, they got to try to win. And it, at this stage, they got to look at complexity and understand that complexity has a good game plan. Yeah. If they have a good yeah. game plan, that means we have to have a better game plan. Yeah. And they have to predict the game plan of complexity throughout the game as well. So it's, it's just another chess match. And I think that we're going to see some interesting chess decisions made between the two team captains, Jimbo and Tusk. I know that the way. I've watched the Money 8s with Tusk on it, and he's constantly making play calls. He said, all right, they're going to push big door here. Let's just bait them out. You know, just little heads up plays by predicting what the enemy's going for. And Navi's going to have to do that back if they're going to come back in this game. All right, here we go. Game two. Complexity up 1-0 in the series and already up one 
early on in this game as King Nick has possession of that sniper rifle. And it looks like he could be on a fairly dangerous flank here. I do not think Glory or any of Navi expect this. Huge opening pick and body shot. Oh, through the shroud Double screen! Kill. Takes the shot through the shroud. Just had to make an educated guess about where that player was. Huge plays out of King Nick early on. Wow, King Nick got to watch his toes there. Was, those grenades had a little bit of danger to him. Nonetheless, King Nick going to maintain control of that sniper at the snipe tower. 7-4 to four lead now for complexity. And, oh, shit's about to say they're sitting pretty at the top of tower. Massive takedown there with King Nick. And you can see the member of complexity there was Gilkey. He wanted to pick up that snipe. We know how good he is with it, but it looks like those power weapons are going to go to the hands of Navi instead. So crucial for them to get control and keep Versal. control of them after Glory gets a couple of kills. He does drop it, though. Looks like Tusk was the one to pick it up. Did you see Glory there? Great use of the repulsor. You can actually repulse the heat wave to speed up uh, the, those plasma yeah. seeking damage as we saw him do that to earn the trade before shortly going down. Huge heads up play from him. And now it's Navi because of that heads up play from the likes of Glory and the rest of his four team, three teammates. He got a five kill lead. This one's flipped quick. Navi definitely taking advantage of that entire situation. Not only did they get the kills on the tower side, but they quickly navigated across to the A side where they knew enemies were likely to be spawning, applying maximum pressure, not allowing complexity to take much space, and that's what's given them this early four-point lead. Hopping back on board here with King Nick. Has another single-shot weapon in his hand in the Bandit Rifle, the new starting weapon of HCS Season 3, included with the scope. Wow. But for now, battle rifles rain out across live fire. Carmeo looking to stay alive at the top of Snipe down to one HP. And love this use of the repulsor. Gets an assist. Stays alive, but not for much longer as Navi sent two on the tower and take Carmeo down because of it. Carmeo did make a bit of a cheeky play there, repulsing up to the top tower to get that back smack. But second repulse doesn't help his chances of going to another kill. Going down ends up being a trade, really, for him. So Navi maintaining their lead here. Snipe drone going down in the tunnels. Mine is going down shortly after that, but now before three down for complexity. Navi doing such a great job to make sure that we saw that previously with Mighty's with the trade out. Even when they lose numbers, even when they go down two or three, it's three or four for complexity because of that. They've extended that lead, doubled up now. Six. Gilkey contesting the sniper top mid. Looked like Snipe Drone was possibly able to get it and drop into the vent. I believe it is. Snipe drone with the sniper rifle. Going to be massive for Navi to maintain their lead to keep that out of complexity's hands. King Nick takes down a Z Mighty's who looked to escape through the screen door, not able to as he now has shots down on the cuts. Snipe Drone has to back up here. Tusk doing a great job with the pre nades. I love that play there from Tusk. My God, the game sense to drop through the shoot, get that pre nade down, and if not for a few more pu uh, pushing from Navi, that could have been a collateral there with that grenade. Absolutely. Navi electing to just back all the way up through the rat tunnel. It's actually Carmea with the sniper. We missed the action of when that traded, hand, traded hands. But this overshield going to be so crucial. Carmea just going to be watching it like a hawk from the tower. Going to make it very difficult for Navi to get this overshield. So this is exactly what Complexity needs if they're going to come back into this. Navi with the lead, but Complexity has the edge. Best chances of securing this overshield, especially Tusk taking shots on an unsuspecting glory. Gets the stick, actually. Another great use of that repulsor we see here in this game is Tusk is looking for two. Doesn't land enough shots. Another, there's a free grenade counter on Tusk, and it, they use that strategy to take him down there. A little bit of a back and forth there from both teams. What I believe that play was from Tusk was intentionally pulling aggression away from his teammates on the other part of the map. Yes, it looked like he kind of died for free, but he gave his teammates a bit more space to move up with the overshield. Gilki now has the heat wave here, taking a more defensive position after he gets taken down. But uh, right now, complexity down, but waiting for Navi to come to them. I'm not sure if this is a strategy. The team with the lead doesn't have a good reason to push unless they get an early pick. Navi taking a very defensive approach in the garage area for now. Yeah, Gilki recognized that. Right as you said it, Eli, it's almost like you're hive mind connected with him because he realized that push ain't coming from Navi. It's not on them to push right now as they have that two kill lead. They're maintaining it here as we get closer and closer to the halfway mark. Gilkey elects now to play cheeky instead on the sandbags. But look at the positioning from Navi. They're all bottom mid, every single one of them. And it looks like they're located as bottom mid. You're going to see a ton of grenades come in down there. Gilkey going in just long enough to get the beat down before he gets out. King Nick now with a double kill. 
Jimbo, kill of his own, but now we're tied up 29 all going into the six and a half minute mark. And that's two sequences, Eli, where complexity got the drop on Navi, quite literally dropping down into bottom mid tunnel system where the grouping of Navi made it fairly easy for a lot of damage to go down. Thought there might have been a little heat wave damage spread out across three, maybe even all four of the players for Navi as they stopped the bleeding, take two down for complexity. Huge moment in this match as we get into the 30s, only a one kill lead for Navi. Not only that, but we're approaching the six minute mark. That's when both the sniper and the overshield come up in the next five seconds here. This next fight gonna be incredibly important to see who's gonna trade the lead into the uh, second half here. Usually you want the sniper tower control for the overshield. You can use that shroud screen and the high ground for your advantage, but not, uh, Mighty uses the cut system to put the flank on uh, Complexity and Carmea as he goes down. Z Mighty's now has the snipe to work with and they're gonna trickle away with not only that snipe, but the lead as well, now at four. Did you see that? In unison, they both turn around. There must have been a call out to bottom mid. They both turn around and shred that player before he can possibly escape through the pillars. It's very clear that Navi listening to each other very efficiently here. Like this positioning with the sniper from Mighty's as well. I think that oh, this is going to be unexpected snipe. by complexity. And if he can keep hitting shots like that, he's going to grow this lead. Unbelievable angle there as Z Mighty's had the, the side, the low ground. And he made that into an advantage for him as. He landed that nice snipe headshot on the top tower. Surprised to not see him take the tower after taking down the tower holder, but it's all part of the strategy here for Z Mighties and Navi as they have that B, C side of the map. Navi now pushing towards that snipe tower. All four on the overshield and cut side for complexity, and this one's getting a lot of hand. A multi possession game now, six kill lead for Navi. Mighty's actually teaching everyone watching here how to position yourself as the sniper. He chose to play between his teammates during that moment. You thought that he might want to take tower, but he had a teammate that was already tower. He had a teammate at green. If he plays in the middle, he's likely to have help. Kind of overheated a little bit there when he jumped off of the tower. Might have been feeling himself a little bit too much, but at the end of the day, he did provide a lot of damage that's uh, helped his team maintain their lead so far. Carmea looking to be a sneaky beaver at the top events here on Live Fire. Has that heat wave to work with. An unsuspecting member of Navi walks by. They're likely to get melted. It's another interesting moment in the match where Overshield is up in 10. That's going to make Carmea's positioning not as effective at the top events. That's why you see him drop. Takes down Snipe Drone. Strong side's out of there, but not before going down to glory. Trades are not what you want to see if you're Double Complexity kill. right now. You're going to have to get some clean kills without a trade. If the rest of this game goes traded out. It will go to the favor of Navi. Glory now putting the shield in the suit. They're going to make a push off of this. Try to mount their lead even more. Looks like the green gun in the hands of Carmea, but Navi's teammates, Glory's teammates, going to make sure he gets taken down before taking that green gun to the overshield. Great push out of Navi here. Oh, there's one way to take down the OS. Tusk with the headshot. Sniper rifle activity at the top of Snipe Tower. Doing a great job across the history of Halos. That's always been a great location to take the, uh, take the sniper. The top of Snipe Tower is Tusk. No more ammo in it. Pushes out instead through the low ground. And that's, I think, a because of the strategy for Navi, that at the beginning and middle of this game, they were using the, the bottom of the map. They were using the tunnel system to move around. But they haven't been doing that ever since. Tusk still checking for it, but it's not there. Navi has switched their strategy up mid-game, and they're up by 10 because of it. What impressive chess map match performance we're seeing from them. You make a great point. <clears throat> you start to study your opponent. You decide this is their tendency, but then what if that tendency changes? That's the adaptation that we're seeing mid-game from Navi is if we're constantly doing different things, they can never predict what we're actually going to do, and love to see that you pointed that out. I mean, these guys are playing on another level. Like I said, uh, Jimbo, a veteran, when it comes to these situations, he knows how to close out games and how to throw off his opponents. And I gotta, I'm going to give that maybe. Maybe Jimbo, the veteran, made that call to no longer use bottom mid to try to traverse around the map. We see the tunnel system used a lot like a subway system on live fire, but like you said, if the other team starts to predict it, like Complexity was, but Complexity thought Navi was going to keep going back to that well of strategy, and they did not. So a great job, a master class. Like I said, could maybe give that to the IGL Jimbo, but let's shout out the coach, Wonderboy, as well. A great addition, a great a long staple stay at that Navi organization. A great guy, a great coach is at that, as he helps his team tap the series 1-1. We talk a lot about how this game is solved. And at this point in the meta, every team kind of knows in general what they should do in each spot. But whenever that's the case in any game, what's the strategy that ends up starting to work? The art of deception. And the strategy the other opponent doesn't expect. Exactly. Just doing the unexpected, doing something that 
they just don't expect in the moment and you do it fast in such a way that they have no opportunity to respond to it. And I saw that time and time again from the side of Navi. Uh, just sometimes they would do a three-man push through Big Door out of nowhere. And then other times they're spread out in a complete setup. And it's, they're just adapting moment to moment. And that's really how you win Team Slayers at this stage in the meta. I love this conversation because it goes against common knowledge, right? Stay smart, stay alive. But if you make the dumb play, as long as the other team doesn't expect it, it can work out for you. And Absolutely. I'm not saying that was initially a dumb play here from Navi, that counter they, the counter switch up they made with the strategy, but it goes outside of the book, right? Like yes. they're not playing by the book, they're playing by the whim of the situation. Exactly. And that is what we saw there from Navi. A game that was back and forth, early lead there for complexity with the score and the sandbox, but that switch up at the, at the middle of the map when it was most contested was why Navi were able to take that game tied up here at one. Before we get into a game three, we got an extended break uh, because these players are now using the restroom. I want to just thank the community, man, the LVT Halo community. We are not out here getting paid. We're not out here. Uh, we're actually paying to be out here. So <laughs> right. because of y'all's support, we're able to be here. We're able to do what we, lo we love. We're not necessarily doing this for, again, a paycheck, but the passion, the love of the game, and my goodness, the incredible life experiences that we all share together here on this LVT Halo team alongside you guys, the community. So I want to thank you guys for not only being here, but <laughs> sustaining through the ads, right? Sticking around through the ads if you're not subscribed, but if you are subscribed, whether it's through a gifted, Keep a, watching the a prime time, or a, <laughs> a, a, a tier one, two, or three, you guys mean the world to us, and I just want to say thanks. No, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I honestly, after the last tournament, I didn't think it was even going to be feasible that I could be here, but thanks to the support of the community, both mine, LVT's community, really everyone. I mean, Halo, we, we just have a small community in general, but it seems like we're all here to support each other. We all love this game. We've all been doing it forever. And I don't think we're going to stop anytime soon. So uh, very grateful to have you guys here and supporting LVT every step of the way. The energy is palpable. The momentum that Halo has is palpable. You can feel it. And especially, I want to bring that to you guys at home that aren't here in Seattle because, my goodness, Eli, how electric has the atmosphere been this year at Worlds, especially compared to last year. The crowd on Friday, at least Friday evening, Friday night, looked almost like a Sunday crowd yeah. last year. So unbelievable growth and unbelievable activations, man. You've got to get a chance to come out to an HCS event next year. After the addition of all these cool panels with guys like, you got Master, you go meet Master Chief, Cortana, the Arbiter. Yeah. You can go throw down in a Halo 2 tournament this weekend. Yeah. This is an incredible turnaround for the HCS. They've made additions to the experience in person that just simply were not there, even at the beginning of this season. So. We talk about some of the turnarounds for these teams and making up strategies on the fly and kind of seeing what works and working with it. That's what HES has done here with the in-event experience. And I've had some of my most recent fun, or my most fun at some of these recent events. As we switch gears here, this is a matchup we're all waiting for. Your winner semis, Space Station versus Quadrant. Here we go. Right now, Space Station with a massive lead, but Quadrant Currently with a trip cap, as wow. Tick takes one down. This could definitely swing the other way. Keep in mind, Quadrant, known for their insane Stronghold's ability. We know that they can close this out if they play Perfect Halo. We've known they can play Perfect Halo in this game type. Can they do it against Space Station, who looks red hot right now? We'll wow. Yeah, you would have thought, hopping on board, just a quick glance at the score. Maybe you probably would have thought it was Quadrant with that lead, doubling up on the competition. But no, it's SSG on the brink of taking this game one. Needing only 30 seconds, but not before Quadrant earned themselves three caps, A, B, and C. Space Station stopping the bleeding for now. Need that win on A if they want to prevent another trip cap. Huge win there from Bound, it feels like. Legend trying to clean up the damage. Actually gets the kill on Stellar before blinking out. What a huge play with the new Quantum Translocator. That was an insane play from Legend. And then oh! another huge win from Sika against Penguin. They're right back in this. Yeah, and they're right behind us, too. You can hear a little roar, a little mini roar from the Quadrant team as they are feeling themselves. And down, what, 220 to 90, uh, 670, 79 when we joined uh, this match? It's now virtually tied, 199 to 220, but A and B starting to trickle along for Space Station. Yeah, but Sika's going to play spoiler to B, at least for the moment. A couple players on Quadrant go down. That means that Space Station does have the ability to get control. The next set of spawns and how eff effectively Quadrant plays off of them is going to be so important here. This is a game that you've got to play. Really, Wesley, you've got to play until you hear the bell. We saw yesterday LBT had 28. Double kill. And if you don't get those final two seconds, it. it could be it. 
as we see SSG looking to approach the final 10 seconds. Now five, if not for a last-ditch effort here from Quadrant. This could be it. Sika goes down in B, and looks like it should do it, if not for a jump out from C, and they're not even going to get a chance. SSG take it up 1-0. At the very end there, Space Station got three kills. Left the fourth guy at bottom uh, snipe lift. Let the other team spawn there and just played perfectly. I don't think Quadrant got another kill after that moment. They just played perfect defense to close it out. Was a scary one for them, but looking at the same game type here, jumping back into Complexity versus Navi. This is the tiebreaker game of the series. One of these teams will take a 2-1 lead going into game four. What a what a what incredible work here from Louis V. Titan, man. You don't miss a second of the action on LVT Halo. We're switching right back into another match as we have Complexity and Navi tied in a great series here so far. Pretty close here in the early goings, but not before Navi take a potential trip cap and really start to extend on this lead. Complexity looks like they're in a bit, little bit of a blender to start this one. Yeah, so far, great looking start for Navi. Maybe still running off some of the momentum from their game two win. Glory with the sniper. This guy is one of the best snipers in the world. See if he can show off the skills that we all know he has. Using the QT to stay alive here. There's something in the water in EU, because now that's two times we've seen effective use of the QT from Quadrant and Navi. And that's important to bring up because we haven't seen very much effective use of the QT throughout any of the lands this year since it's been introduced. So great work with that QT from Quadrant in that previous match, and now Navi as well. Put it to good work because they have built this lead. 60 and rolling the first minute on the board for Navi before Complexity could even get three. Yeah, we've now seen the QT for a few events. The meta is certainly growing with it. It is still, in my opinion, pretty hard to find solid value out of it. That's why you don't see many players go out of their way to grab it. It's in a very precarious situation. They're usually not going to grab it unless they have several dead. Navi with another trip cap opportunity here and has complexity spawning in the tram. They know that they can continually defend and cause split spawns by just pushing these spawns out. Now it looks like the rest of Complexity spawns at the seaside, and they also are playing defense there. This is great split spawn control out of Complexity, or out of Navi. Are we watching Quadrant? Because this looks exactly what we just saw from Quadrant. They didn't ultimately win that game against SSG, but some of that spawn manipulation, some of that spawn staggering control, and it makes sense because who better to study than your rival in your uh, in your in your country, right? Everyone always claims that it's, it's tough being in EU because you don't get practice with NA. Now it's almost like a, a positive in the likes of Quadrant's Ascent because now Navi can take information and growth that other NA teams can't take because they don't get the chance to scrim against a, a team like Quadrant. So interesting to point out some of the growth and incredible seller play we've seen in Strongholds from both Navi and Quadrant as Navi builds on this lead. They had 60 to three. Now it's looking like 160 to three. Or are they going to stop? Doesn't look like it, and that, I love that play from Mighty's there. He was one shot, but he's like, you know what? If I just stand in the stronghold and stop Complexity from capping it, one of my goaded teammates is going to show up and kill that guy that's trying to cap. And just because he was in there a little bit longer actually made it possible for Navi to maintain control of B. Great heads-up plays from Mighty. There. And look at the... You talk about spawn manipulation, now they're really forcing Complexity into that backside of A. They almost gave it to him for free. They got a little trip cap for a bit, made sure they take two seconds for every one, but not before giving A back to Complexity. And now they've got to push off their back foot. Now they've got to push up now. If not, Navi are going to take this game quickly. Only four minutes passed, and Navi's already looking at a 200-point lead. It's off the back of this man on your screen, Glory, 11-5. and five. He was able to get, looked like, four body shots with that sniper before ultimately taking down. Teammates weren't really finishing the kills in that moment, so a slight hiccup here from Navi is going to give an opening to Complexity to start getting some control of their own. How does Navi play off of their back foot when they're the team that's getting their spawns predicted? We'll have to see. I'm curious to see if Navi gets A spawns here. Carmeo pushing out likely gives Navi that back A spawn, I believe, or at least Cafe, as we do see them spawn Cafe. Carmeo looking across, doesn't get the beat on his opponent. Sniper shot ringing out. I believe that's from the sniper for complexity. Maybe Gilkey behind Carmea as he takes some shots at the A ledge. Doesn't allow Navi to push out, and now Navi is at that back of A. How do they push off off their back foot? If not, this could be a game. This could, complexity could right back in it. What we just saw Navi do to complexity, it looks like complexity is doing to them. This game type, like I said, one of the hardest in the entire HCS series that we play right now. 
I love the decision from Navi though. They actually had spawned in blue, elected to go all the way to A, cap that first, and then play out of A from there. A lot better prospects than just playing straight out of blue to the center of the map. So very smart from Navi. But so far, the defense from Complexity is still strong enough to keep them at bay. But like we said, this can easily turn hands the same way that we saw at the beginning of the game. Yeah, Navi looking for that AC hold to potentially just split and trap Complexity all at the bottom of mid. Not really any rhyme or reason to the spawns when you've got control of A or C, but Navi not going to be able to control that. Instead, it's Complexity who get control of A, get control of B and C, and they're right back in it. Down by a count of 100, but it feels like they're back in it. Absolutely. I mean, it's been the tale of whichever team is in control. How well are they holding the spawn points? And right now, it's Navi that gets control again, but don't have the best positioning, in my opinion. I think that Complexity could get out of this. We'll have to see how well they play from this spot. Glory on the cafe side. Back of the wow. body shot on Tusk. Cl cleans up with the battle rifle there. That's a nice little sequence there from Glory, utilizing every bit of his toolkit to take down two, and then utilizing the teamwork. The support there from Snipe Drone to take down a third. And look at that. He continued to push up despite being one shot. Sees the players spawning in tram. Backs up immediately, recognizing he can play at this flank. This is a very young player with oh a lot of... Oh, my God! He is showing that he knows how to play with the best of them. Four dead for complexity. Another trip cap. That's going to close out the game for Navi. Oh, we're getting a little sneak peek at who could pop off in HCS Season 3 with the addition of that new starting weapon, the Bandit with the scope. Glory didn't need that scope though, man. He looked oh. really good with the perfect five shots from that bandit rifle, swapping to the battle rifle and back-to-back -back sequences with a double kill. That was impressive there from Glory. Kid is super talented. Can't wait to see how he continues to evolve as a player. He's got the right group of people around him, starting to figure things out. And that's, that means Navi's up 2-1 here. If they win the next game, complexity goes home. But it's gonna be up to recharge King of the Hill. This is one of the most strategic game types that we see. It's going to be a lot about which team is able to rotate to the better parts of the map for each hill. Every single hill has its own kind of area that you want to control. First hill, you want to control the seaside. You want to also have top glass if possible. Force the other team to spawn in A, which is going to be forcing them to go through two tiny doorways if they're going to contest the hill. And it's very easy to play defense against two tiny doorways. So we're going to see both teams fighting for C before they even get in the hill for most of this first hill. This is such an interesting series layout to take a look at and just to provide some context to this series as Complexity started off winning game one. They started off that particular game with the first score, looked to seem to really have the aggressive pace, seemed to really be the proactive team and seemed to be countering Navi. But then in games two and three, it's been Navi who have arguably done an even better job of that as the score I think reflects it to 50 to 40 in the Slayer and a 250 to 106 where Navi really did look like they're like a quadrant team with that uh, impressive Stronghold's performance, the ability to stagger those spawns and forcibly send complexity to the back of A with not much hope or options to work with. What do you make of the series so far, Eli? What's, uh, what's on your mind as we approach Game 4? I mean, it's been all Navi the last two games. I've always thought that Capture the Flag is such a unique game type that your team could be very good at Capture the Flag, but not very good at the time-based modes or Team Slayer. It's just kind of a unique format. So. Navi probably feeling pretty good about this, going into King of the Hill, which is pretty similar to Strongholds. Uh, and they've got all the fire. I mean, like you said, they, they were able to hold that trip cap up to 190. When Complexity got it, they only got 100. And then Navi just, they, they were able to get out of that spot faster than Complexity. And they held it for longer when they had it. So they're just playing better, in my opinion. You know what else I think it is, Eli? Hmm. The symmetricality of Capture the Flag game modes. It's always on a map that's perfectly symmetrical. That makes it much easier for both teams to have efficient spawn control. Right. Now on these asymmetrical maps where you really got to do a little bit more math. You got to do a little bit more geometry, I should say, to predict the correct spawn point. And Navi has done a better job of that in games two and three on those asymmetrical maps. Maybe the outline of it, uh, a circle or an over or a square, but I wouldn't necessarily say live fire, solitude, or symmetrical maps. You got to be perfectly aligned. Every uh, On the flip side of one corner, it's got to fold and be perfect. And I think our only symmetrical maps are the CTF maps, Argyle, Aquarius, and the Pit. Right, no, you make a good point. It's much easier to control spawns in Capture the Flag because the spawns are locked to one side. Yep. There's really only two corners of the map they could spawn, whereas on all these maps, there's four corners to spawn, so you have to be a bit highly aware of the differences there. And right now, Navi's been having better spawn control on the four corner setups. All right, here we go. Hopping on board into a game for Navi on match point. Needing one to continue on to a top eight 
and running finish. Complexity needs this game to send us to a game five or they go back to Texas as well. Saw G1 get eliminated earlier. Complexity looking to avoid that here. Uh, this is what I talked about. Both teams going to be fighting for C side of the map. Jimbo not even looking at the hill. He knows he's going to have to face an opponent in C. Carmea getting that kill and now pushing it up into the tower. Trusted his teammates will hold C. They're going to force these spawners into A. This is the best possible setup at the early goings of this game time. It feels like earning time first in King of the Hill is a trap, Eli. How often do we see that scoreboard build almost what feels like an insurmountable lead in the beginning, and then the team that gets in the hill second takes a bigger one, as we see exactly that from Complexity. And with that three, now four down from Navi. Complexity can not only take this hill, but they can earn the rotation to C, as they're already set up for it. Did you see that play from Carmea? So he pushed into A, which worried me for a second. I thought he was going to break the spawns, but he immediately left A to go to the batteries to reopen the A spawns because he knows that's where they need to spawn for the next rotation as well. Huge heads-up plays from Carmea to not only get a slay that could have got away, but also continue to stagger the spawns and force them at the other side of the map all at the same time. Great plays from Carmea. Massive win condition on King of the Hill to score and then get that rotation. It starts to feel like a snowball. Rolling down the hill. Navi doing their best to make sure that wow. uh, hill, the score in the hill goes back to them as it's been all complexity for the last full one hill and a half. Three go down for complexity. This is going to be Navi's chance to come right back. That was an X Factor play if I've ever seen one. Glory giving it no Fs about the setup. Just grappling his way into the back of the setup, dealing insane damage to three players, ends up killing two. Breaks the setup completely into Navi's favor now, all on the backs of that play from Glory. That was a beautiful play to watch. Yeah, Glory the catalyst for what's been a great hold here as Navi have not only tied this particular hill, but they've gained the lead. Going to close out here, but Numbers Advantage has gone back into favor of Complexity. It's going to take a pivot win here from Glory. Not able to escape with the grapple hook, and Complexity now have the edge. Three go down for Navi. Not what you want to see when Complexity doesn't need that much more time to close out this hill. So crucial to get these first two hills. Now, it's getting close to the point where Nami might elect to stop contesting this to just have an early rotate to A. It's going to depend how this fight goes, but they do win the fight, and they might be the ones capturing this hill, forcing complexity to just, you know, rat up in A for a bit until the hill moves. But so far, both teams not willing to give this up. They're going to continue to fight for this hill. Favorable long haul spawns there for complexity look like because of Gilkey's position at the sneaky side of the map. Complexity gets to spawn right up next wow. to him and get right back in this fight. And they are right back in it indeed as Jimbo now going to have to secure some cross shots here. Looks to flank the right side of King Nick, but King Nick knows he's pushing up for him. Got to pay attention to the hill, though. Anytime these battles occur on the opposite side of the map and the attention starts to pull away from the hill, that's when you see a score go down. Jimbo was baited by King Nick here. Great heads-up play by the veteran there, King Nick. Honestly, King Nick's play was so good. I mean, that positioning top goal is so important for those first two hills because you can see all of the cross from the oh. other side. Double we talk oh. about the as kill. the brains, but this man is hitting some shots right now. What a sick triple kill. From Tusk! Tusk. With the montage highlight reel play, lands the triple shock rifle. Perfect shots to earn the third rotation. Navi got it for a little bit, but that lockdown hill wasn't locked down at all. Complexity, take it right back. Huge plays out of the captain, Tusk. Like I said, this guy does not get enough credit. Such a catalyst for his team's success. Showing that he's no slouch with the shock rifle either, despite the fact that most of his teammates are the ones that wow. typically get it. But even then, Navi getting a clean four dead after a great push. They were able to push through multiple entry points simultaneously. And that's a hard hill to break. Yeah, both teams successfully breaking through. About virtually tied once again. And that's so interesting to note. It feels like if you look at the scoreboard, it's all complexity. But no, 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 no. Every single one of these hills have been highly contested. It's been that meticulous positioning and execution from complexity. Let's not forget the triple kill from Tusk. That has them in the mix, but Navi only need a couple more seconds. Three, but they go three down. King Nick, last player alive for Complexity. Jimbo was the last alive for Navi. King Nick wins the race into the hill. Oh my God. Armea there to follow up, and that Usain Bolt esque sprint off of his spawn from King Nick is going to secure his team the third point, going up three to zero. This is going to be hard for Navi to come back. Oh, Complexity looking to take a hell of a lot of momentum into a game five. Not there just yet, but with three on the board. Three and a half to go. Complexity is sitting in the driver's seat for 
what looks like a potential Game 5 elimination lower round one matchup. I'm smiling here because I'd love to see it. We're not fans of any team, Eli. We're, we're fans of Game 5. Yeah. It looks like we'll have just that. But Nabi, not before they have something to say about it, but 25% on the score. Look at the patience from Carmea here, recognizing how important it is that he stays alive with this shock rifle. Losing this gun right now could be the end of the game for his team. He's actually going to wait a moment. Looks like King Nick got a cheeky kill off the pad in the hill here. Carmea can finish this kill. It's going to be massive, but the gun does trade hands. Mighty's now with the game in his hands. Game on the line, and Navi needing the next three in a row to tie it. Complexity, because of this lead, they don't necessarily have to desperate for the hill. They could play a little bit of Team Slayer. They could elect to just milk out this clock as we start to see those seconds, seconds tick away. As every second that Z-Mighty's isn't in this hill, it's going to be an advantage for Complexity. As two go down for Navi, it's going to be very difficult here for him. He's going to have a push from the backside and wow. to go down to it. Actually, a huge pick by Complexity there. Navi does need this hill to go in their favor quickly, so they still have enough time to cap three more hills. And it looks like Glory is going to secure it. He's also going to secure the shock rifle okay. for himself. But it's Complexity already set up in A at the new hill. And because of how efficient Complexity was in this game, Eli, it actually benefits Navi in the sense that they've got plenty of time to work with. Three minutes left on the clock, only down two. Despite the big lead, quote unquote, for Complexity, Navi's right in it. Yeah, the time on the clock so important in these moments. Would not be surprised to see. Complexity opt to play time for the rest of this. I mean, it's going to take two perfect hills. And it's pretty easy to play defense against these hills as we see Carmea get a ninja on my. That was a G slide ninja. I think it was like for a double or triple kill. Too. Off the box, Carmea. That's part of what we saw from him in HCS season one. But sometimes he would G slide just for the sake of G sliding. Now he's much more methodical with it. Got to give credit to Ryan Noob. Carmea credited him, him himself. And teaming with Ryan Noob was a great. Killing spree. A great, uh, uh, great thing for him. Great opportunity for him. There's the word I was looking for. Great opportunity for Carmea, and he took every bit of that learning lesson as he's improved a hell of a lot from where he was in season one. It seemed like in season one, Carmea was taking a lot of risks that maybe didn't have high enough of an ups upside to go for him. But now the risks that he takes are calculated. He takes calculated risks that have a high upside. And the last couple plays just it. just won them this game. I mean, I saw him also make a play that a lot of people might scratch their head. Why is he pushing two players 1v2 in tower? But all he has to do is get one kill, and that essentially stops the push from Navi. Not only just one kill, Eli, but two players' attention. Right. Just like we saw that third score, I think it was, for, for Complexity, where Jimbo went on a side quest, a wild goose chase to take down King Nick, all the while on the complete opposite side of the map. Complexity were putting their next hill on the board. So Complexity will take that recharge King of the Hill rather convincingly, and I, I think that's important for them because 3-2, Complexity's other win was extremely close. Games two and three were all Navi, you could make an argument, at least towards the end of the game, but Complexity takes a little bit of momentum, looks just as good as Navi did in those previous two, heading into a game five, and I think that's right where Complexity wants to be. I mean, we talked about it, both these teams kind of having a similar trajectory arc this tournament. No surprise to see them beating up in a game five, coming down to the wire. This could be a 50-49 like we saw earlier. I mean, oh baby. This this game is won not even by inches, but by millimeters, man. It's nanoseconds. Nanoseconds. Just the smallest differences. A single extra BR burst in a player can meet, mean the difference between winning and losing some of these games. So uh, both teams going to be looking to ice up here. I'm going to Expect another slow start like we saw in the last Streets Game 5 between Sentinels and Native White. I think both these teams are going to be very cautious off the start, but as soon as they have an opening, they're going to collapse in and try to wipe the rest of the squad. I think this could be an opportunity to take the C-spawn, if you do get that C-spawn, and maybe slow play with the use of that Stalker off the rip. I I think that might be a part of the strategy. I'm not sure who's going to get that C-spawn off the rip, but keep an eye on that Stalker rifle. We saw previously in that game five between Sentinels and Native White in the mirrored lower round one matchup. Stalker rifle didn't get any usage throughout the uh, most of the game until it got into the hands of Boo Boo Dubu, sitting at 11 and 16. He went on a six kill spree with that Stalker rifle to win by a few kills. So all it takes is one player to pop off with one of those guns and go on a screen. And there's plenty on streets, right? You got exactly. even the Sentinel Beam, I think, is a, is a viable weapon. Sometimes oh, yeah. even a power weapon if you got the right tracking. 
No, it's definitely a power weapon. It, it destroys yeah. the BR at, at close range as long as you have good tracking, like you said, and all these players are going to have good tracking. Another thing, too, about the Sentinel Beam, it's, it's such a great defensive weapon because you think about the cadence of a battle rifle shot. Brr, brr, yeah. brr. You have an idea of when you're not going to be taking damage, which can help settle your shot. That Sentinel Beam, zzz, that, that thing's just melting you down. That's just the continuous right. TTK, continuous damage that you have to take on. And I, I'd argue that it's a little bit harder to fight back against something like that when you're trying to get some steady shots on. What do you think? No, absolutely. I mean, the BR, the pacing of the BR means that you could, in theory, hide behind cover with perfect timing when the player is trying to shoot. But against a Sentinel Beam, if you're exposed for any amount of time, you're going to be shot for that amount of time as well. So. But there's also a counter to that. I mean, if you jiggle peek a guy with a Sentinel Beam, it's going to be very hard for him to keep tracking you, and you're going to force him to reload faster than he could possibly kill you. So, I mean, there's there's play to it and counterplay as well. What are some other uh, maybe X-Factor weapons on this map? We don't see the... Uh, I'm drawing a blank on it. The, the Disruptor. The, the Disruptor used as often. It got nerfed. doesn't have that DOT effect, but I think we saw a pretty cheeky, sneaky kill with it. An important one yesterday. I forget exactly the moment there, but... Yeah. I, don't forget about the Disruptor, right? Don't forget about all the tools, all the weapons on this map is, like you said earlier, Eli, the most per capita, per volume right. of the entirety of HCS. The most sandbox weapons are on this map. Right, and I think what we're seeing a lot of use from this weekend, maybe more than some past tournaments, is the Bandit. I don't know if it's because players are That's getting right. ready with it. Like, you know, in a few days, this is going to be the starting weapon. Maybe I should get good with it and play it in high-pressure situations. But <laughs> yeah, it's also, way to warm up. <laughs> yeah, it's also just, I mean, frankly, better and has a faster TTK if you hit all your shots at close range compared to the battle rifle. So I think that um, teams that are us utilizing it to its potential are doing pretty well this weekend. I got a little question. Uh, this is getting a little bit into the future, but I assume the battle rifle, we assume, uh, we talked about it last night, that the battle rifle will take the place of where the bandit rifle is currently on most maps. Do you see the battle rifle getting picked up in HCS Season 3? I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but I think that's an important conversation to bring up while we wait for Game 5. I think so, especially on the larger maps. Like, think about on Recharge. We've got the setup where you're, like, top A, top gold, and you're yeah. watching the crosses. Yeah. I have to imagine the BR is probably going to put down more damage at distance. It's a laser beam across the map. I don't, I have, we haven't seen just how effective the Bandit Evo is with the scope in that exact situation. But or the range drop-off. That's another... Uh... Yeah, so I don't know. It's hard to say until we get our hands on it. We're definitely excited for Season 3, as I'm sure you guys are as well. Hopping on board to a hotly Double contested kill. match here between Luminosity and Native Red. 2-1 in the series in Native Red's favor, but on this last hill could go either way. This is surprising, Hunter. Yeah, Native Red with the timely team wipe take all four down for Luminosity. We talked about Luminosity making history as the best placing that a Mexican team has gotten here at the HCS World Championship. Huge ups to them for making that history, but they're looking to go one better. And they could force a game five here against Native Red. Tied 3-3, tied virtually on this hill as well, but Soul Snipe and Native Red have the edge. Wow, great positioning though from Luminosity, immediately triangulating that player that was in the hill. Looks like They're in overtime as well, Eli. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is last hill takes it, obviously. Native Red doesn't need that much more time, so we see members of Luminosity kind of pushing it one by one, and I think that's it, Hunter. I think ah, that'll do it, yeah. They probably could have taken a little bit more time to, to perhaps triangulate the enemies better, but, I mean, great fight that they put up. I mean, they were able to take a game against Native Red. Oh, that's, man. That, I don't think that any international team Besides the likes of Quadrant and Navi have taken a game off of Native Red no, no. before, so. Uh, Mexico has never gotten this deep in the Halo World Championship. Quadrant EU have never gotten top three until this season. Yeah. The growth internationally. Now we're just waiting for one of those ANZ teams to start making some noise, and I think we have that dream coming to fruition that the HCS had when they set this up back in 2015 or so to create a global esport in Halo. It was always a, a national, uh, an, a, an NA phenomenon, but always a lot of support in EU as well, but love to see the growth. We haven't talked about this a lot this year from both Mexico and ANZ, and you, even ANZ, let's give credit to them for birthing Barcode, one of the greatest Halo players in the scene. He hails from ANZ, so as we approach, uh, excuse me, not approach, but as we're at the Halo World Championship here, this is some global competition, and it's not like it's been where teams are just kind of showing up on a courtesy call. These teams are here to fight, and they're here to compete, and Luminosity showed that this weekend. So too have Navi, Quadrant, and a lot of the other international teams here, and Seattle. Yeah, so Mexico bounds out in top 12. No slouch of a performance, though. 
I think that ANZ is also taking more games and just looking better. They are absolutely than are. teams in recent events. So props to them for for continuing to grow. Navi here with the chance to be the second European team in the top eight at this tournament if they're able to win this game five against Complexity. But Complexity looked very strong in that game four. This has been back and forth. It was Complexity coming out strong. Navi fighting back with two amazing games, I would say. And then Complexity was just better strategy and positioning throughout the entirety of Recharge. Streets, totally different ball game though. Who's gonna take this one, Hunter? Who's your early prediction here? This one's really hard to say. My gut feeling, I usually have a name that pops up right away, Eli. Nothing popped up. I feel like this one's pretty dead even. And I take a look back behind the curtains and I see that both of these two teams taking a little bit of extra time to discuss the strategy. Do you sometimes get into a little overthink though, Eli, when you take this much time to talk about it? What are your thoughts? I think there's definitely something to be said for that. I mean, the conversation should be like, we've talked about this before. Like these, all these teams should have already put in the work, but I think both these teams might also be a little bit nervous now because like they've not been doing great against some of the other top teams. And both these teams look so strong, so both teams have a good reason to be nervous. I mean, this is a very important moment for both, right? So I think it's okay to take your time, but maybe not too much time. Definitely don't want to overthink the opening strat. I think you just want to stick to what works well for your team and then uh, play every situation intelligently from there. I agree. I think if you can get into that Kobe Bryant level of subconscious performance. That's what you're looking for in game five, because if you start thinking too much, you start to realize how intense and consequential this moment is. It might just make you a little nervous. It might just make those hands shake a little, and that's not what you want if you're Snipe Drone. With that Stalker in his hand, this is exactly what we talked about with the team spawning on C, playing it slow and dominating the high ground with the Stalker. Looks like exactly what Navi's looking to do. Curious to see how Complexity decides to spread out from this position. They're going to want to take angles that can push back the Stalker Rifle's uh, surrounding players, because as soon as a Stalker Rifle gets some damage, the players around the Stalker Rifle player are likely to push. So they're going to try to predict the angles in which the pushers are going to come from. They're going to try to stay alive to that pressure, but also push them back at the same time. I mean, we've this is over a minute, and there's been two kills total. Both teams playing so patiently here. Yeah, this is a snail's pace for each of these two teams. Is two kills <laughs> in 90 seconds? But that makes sense. You're seeing a standoff early. If this was game two, I don't think that would be the case. But in game five, with so much on the line, the moment so huge, not surprised to see a standoff here early. And not surprised to see Complexity take the bait. Impressive patience from them as King Nick opens up the break with the Bandit. There's another utilization of that weapon. Navi with control of Rockets and the Stalker, though. As we see Tusk go down to one of those in the two. But Jimbo trades out, so Rockets are actually going to go back into the hands of Complexity. And if not for that perfect shot there from Snipe Drone, they had played that so perfectly well. Snipe Drone now with 1%, just going to elect to deplete that weapon and maintain control of it here with it up in the next 60 seconds. I think it's Navi's plan to just stay on this side of the map the entire game if they have to. I mean, yeah. if they stay here, they're very likely to get multiple sets of rockets. We see a rocket used to try to fight for the current rockets. That's how slow this yeah. game has been. Yeah. Uh, the new rocket still on the pad here. And it is Navi still. Oh, wow. Another shroud screen shot. We saw that previously. Unbelievable. These guys are Multiple locked in. Blind fire medals being had this game or this series. A triple kill triple out of kill. Mighty's, but he gets traded out by the sticky grenade. Navi is still with a slight edge here and control of both the rockets and the shotgun. Keep in mind that Stalker Rifle is going to be up at 9.05 on the clock. Uh, what a great job there by Glory playing pretty close and tight to his leader, Jimbo, as he's able to take the last. Rocket in the tube, one to work with. It's been all Navi control of the Rockets, Stalker as well. But despite that, Complexity has, has done a great job to make it just a two now. Yeah, two kill game. Yeah, I'd love to see the patience from both teams. The intensity of the moment certainly getting to them. I mean, we were on the stage before, Hunter. You know how your heart rate increases in these moments. I got so nervous, my hands went numb and I couldn't feel my fingers. <laughs> exactly. So. All the blood flows out of your hands and into your heart because you're in fight or flight response because everything is on the line. Your nervous system is literally fighting against you as you're on the stage. This is real. But these guys are experienced. They've been in this situation before. They're certainly not all feeling that pressure. And that's the those are the teammates you count on, the teammates that are not taken by the moment 
able to focus up, maybe help you stay focused when you are a bit nervous. And I think for both of these two teams, I'm not picking like a main slayer to keep an eye on. Because of that conversation you just brought up, Eli, the experience needed so much in a crucial game five right here. I'm looking at Jimbo on Navi and Gilkey for complexity. They're the two players that have the most experience under their belts. Keep an eye on them and how they perform and lead their teams here in this crucial game five. As three go down for complexity, and that's going to give Navi a three kill. Now four kill lead. Love the lack of hesitation from Navi to collapse on that last member. If you ever get three dead, that last guy has such a hard time surviving if you all just don't hesitate to push. But look at Complexity coming off spawn and going three for one in their favor. Glory actually the last player alive. Tries to make a cheeky disruptor play, realizes this might be a bit faded, backs up. And now they're going to try to take some space on the seaside once again. And these two teams do have, it looks like, the strategy that we discussed at the beginning of this game, utilizing every piece of the sandbox. The only thing we haven't seen is the Sentinel Beam, and it's now in the hands of Glory. Wow, we've seen the Disruptor in the feed, we've seen the, the Bandit Rifle, and now Glory looks to do some work with that Sentinel Beam, looking to heat up the competition as he heats up, sitting at 7-3 and three in this game, leading Navi in Slays. I've talked about it all weekend. This weekend is Glory's chance to show that he does have... Really mighty, too. They're, yeah. they're a duo in that sense, I think. Yeah, but Glory is the newest comer to the scene. True. This kid came literally out of nowhere mid-season. From Twitter up, Clips. Yeah, from Twitter Clips and a FFA LAN appearance. Yeah, yeah. To just show who he is. And now he is the highest performer in this game, five. Currently seven and three. Best KD in the entire game. Leading his team by two kills now. Keep an eye on that. So important. Glory gets the opening break. They're able to push into PD. If they can get all the way to back A, they might be able to wipe the rest of complexity. Jimbo playing so patiently here. Snipe Drone also with control of the Stalker. They're going to maintain their lead, but complexity does a great job playing defense there. Snipe Drone, like we saw at the very beginning of this game, at the top of C with that stock rifle in his hand. And that's absolutely the strategy for Navi. I, I'm surprised we don't see more teams take advantage of that C spawn and park the bus on it. That stalker rifle, it's like having Snipe on a map like Streets. As we see Snipe Drone pushing up with it, Jimbo. Again, Navi has control of that crucial rocket stalker combination, we'll call it. Exactly. That's what you're awarded when you have good control of C. Now, the, the difficulty of this setup is how do you take space and hold space on the outskirts so that the other team can't just collapse in on you? Because you can't all just sit inside of C. It's going to make it way too easy for your team to get collapsed on. So that's why we see members of Navi taking space on the B stairs here, also crossing over to the shoddy side. These are essentially the Guardians protecting their Stalker Rifle player. But also, as soon as they get a kill, they're not hesitating to push up and collapse on the re remaining players. But this game is played so slow that it's, it's often gone to a trade. And right now, we're on pace for a timeout. Yeah, this is looking like a 48-47 finish at this rate as we have crossed the halfway mark. Complexity haven't yet crossed the halfway mark. Navi have, but only by one. So this one absolutely expected to go to triple zero on the clock. The clock has three players for Jimbo. Complexity pushing on the spiker grenades, and Jimbo has the back. Jimbo has the positioning, but two go down for Navi. Complexity played this so well. Tusk on the flank on the side of B-Rail. Takes down Jimbo, and this one's back and forth. One kill lead for Navi. Glory still leading the stats for his team. Doesn't have the assist, but he's been that entry fragger. He's been able to find a pick all on his own, multiple spots that allow the rest of his team to collapse. Unless one of these teams gets a clean three dead and multiple weapons, I don't think this game's gonna speed up. We're certainly approaching a very likely timeout scenario here. Every kill gonna be so important. This next set of rockets gonna change the game here. Look at Navi, they're looking at complexity like, what are you guys doing in C? That's our base. Yeah. And it looks like for a minute, Glory on the caution tape, Eli, and the play, uh, teammates position at the top of A. I thought maybe they were playing for that back smack here, draw them into the planner side of the map, but no, it looks like Navi is sticking with that strategy of trying to control the Stalker rifle for now. It looks like Complexity has it. That should give them the edge on this rocket. It's yeah, that damage. As well. Glory pushing in. We saw that a player heaven weakened that player and called him out at the driveway. Glory shooting him back just a little bit. Even that little bit of damage without a kill was enough for them to feel comfortable to grab the rocket. They get two kills in the process. Now they escape with the rockets. Jimbo getting a kill with him, but he gets taken down. There's still a rocket down on the bottom of the map. Who's going to be able to find it here? Oftentimes in these standoffs, it comes down to 
some weapon viability being available on the map to control and contain as we see complexity switch and flip on Navi. It's previously been their control of the Rockets and Stalker. Now in the hands of Gilkey as he fires one. A little, a little astray as it hits the bar, uh, broad side of a barn. No damage done. <laughs> Gilkey looking to push up through middle instead. Really seems to be seeking out some intel here. Listening to his teammates here. He can now play the bait and switch from the top of C. Gilkey unaware that all members of Navi have rotated to the B side here. He's probably still oh my God. anxious about the, the shot side, but oh! Jimbo with the huge trade there with the shotgun. Veteran on veteran, and Jimbo gets the edge. Two go down for complexity. Two kill lead for Navi. Two and a half minutes to go. Tusk with the stalker rifle in his hands. Lands two shots, but not able to get the third. Can complexity clean it up? Lots of damage going down on the backside of PD. And Tusk knows how important it is to stay alive right here, not only because of the score, but because of the control of the last few shots in that stalker. Now, new complexity. Manipulate the stalker, get back to C to control it. No, they will not. They're going to push through. This is the unexpected we talked about in the break. They're making this push through the cafe side. This is totally unexpected from Navi. Looks like they're able to, to spot it out, though, and they rotate in response to it, and they get three Whoa! dead. That Unbelievable could... sequence there from Navi is. Wow. The hesitation, that was complexity had the opening. They had the unexpected play, but they decided to not take it. Navi spotted a member and just sent all of their resources that way. Get three dead, they get a clean rocket. Now they're up by three, but Complexity still finding a way to get a kill. They're gonna need more though. This could be huge in the 2023 Halo World Championship for EU to have two teams representing a quarter of the top eight. Hailing from international representation. z Mighties at the bottom of Trash, trades out with Gilkey. That's gonna be a win condition for them as they're up now six in this game. Out of nowhere, Navi have flipped this match, taking control of the Positioning the sandbox, and now it's on complexity to play a little bit of desperation here. Just a minute to go. Glory fulfilling his destiny this weekend in Seattle, all the way from Ireland. This guy had a chip on his shoulder. He knows he's one of the best in the world, but he's had to prove it. Knew that it would come down to this in game five. He's doing massively 13 and eight. His KD is the same as their lead in this game. Now they're up. They only need five to close this one out. Does Complexity have an answer? Not with how well Jimbo's been cycling the map. He's been like a thorn in the side for Complexity multiple times. The direction of where the opponent is looking is not at the flanking Jimbo, as he has the back of more opponents. And now at this point, you have to draw attention. You have to communicate if your Complexity to seconds. take down Jimbo, but there's not enough time. The lead continues to grow. Are Navi going to do it? Navi recognized they can just stay alive. Gilkey I don't know if double. I agree with that. They, wait. Hold on to your butts, it's a four kill lead. And if Complexity play perfect off spawn here, potentially trapping this Navi team at the back of C, but King Nick gets a kill. Oh my God, they can do this here. They have numbers Ten advantage. Seconds. They have the Stalker guilty with nine to go. Oh, oh he goes down. That's and it. with that slay, Jimbo likely secures another top eight for EU. Oh my God. Great plays from all members of Navi. Icing up in the game five, securing EU 25% of the top eight. Wow. There's only, what, three teams here from EU, and two of them are in the top eight? That's incredible. And two of them only two played. Yeah, the third was you're right. The third one was disqualified. What so. a performance from the international competition this weekend as Mexico gets their first ever top 12, and EU will have two teams in the top eight. And Eli, they're not done just yet. They're not. Like I said, I feel like Glory has a chip on his shoulder this weekend. I think he's here to prove something, and I think he's... You can feel it watching his POV. He can. He's not only he's not just hitting like six shots though. He's he's seeing openings that other players do not see. He's finding ways into the setup. He's doing the unexpected. Ooh. He's getting the most out of it. Taking a look at the bracket here though, we see a 3-0 from Space Station against Quadrant.